The background levels of Element are way higher on this arc. I wonder whether that was part of the plan, to see what you survivors would do with Element if you had access to it. Or maybe, maybe it's the reverse. The plan was to see what Element would do if it had access to survivors. That's the thing about Element. It adapts to whatever it's in contact with. If you aren't careful, Element can corrupt you. But I know you'll be careful. After all, we made it this far, eh? Hello and welcome back to some more Complete Arc with me, James, and we continue with our journey to Complete Aberration, and today we're going to be taming a Reaper. But before we do that, I just want to show you what we've been doing in the background, starting with the Megalosaurus here. This is going to be our army to face off against Rockwell, and we've managed to get one health mutation, two melee mutations in, that's what the points look like, and I'm pleased we've got that up and running. It's just something to do in the background while I'm at the base, gathering things. We've been up on the surface as well, doing some more loot hunting. We haven't got the Megalosaurus saddle, but I do have a Mastercraft shotgun. It's not going to be good enough to face off against Rockwell, but it's something. And I also have a complete set of hazmat gear. All of it varying levels, but it all has better durability. So... Today, we're going to go and tame ourselves a Reaper. And I'm going to bring Delverin along as some backup. And I'll show you where probably the best place to set your trap is. Now, I've used a few different traps, but I've recently come across this one. This is a trap from Captain Fat Dog. And it's definitely one of the cheapest and easiest to use. So I've got all the materials here. I'm going to put a link to his video because he does some really good videos if you want to learn how to build traps. And this is a pretty unique tame for Ark Survival. So unlike any other creature in the game, I do like the fact that they added this one. Of course, no doubt inspired by Alien. So let's just go to the top here and I'm going to fly over the top this way, over the top of this waterfall so you can get an idea of where we're setting up this trap. I find it's difficult to just show transitions going over the map like I usually do in drawing the, the line. So we'll just go there in real time. Now following that waterfall from where we jump from and our base location we're heading straight towards the underwater labyrinth cave. Is just coming up here over these three waterfalls. I think that's half the thing when learning aberration is just getting used to where you're going but you can see the pink crystals now. The labyrinth cave is just below us in the water there. And we want to head to the back of this cave to grab our reaper. Now there's a couple of reasons everybody tends to set up over here. Let's just stick my light pet on. Might as well to end up spawning nameless. And some sort of max level around here. It's probably a piranha, but we'll just head into the back of this cave here. Now, just at the edge of this red zone, as you can see there's the gate just in the distance there. This is where we're going to set up. And everybody tends to build their traps here for the reapers because there isn't any radiation just here. It's just on the edge of the radiation zone. Seekers. Just need to get rid of these. Now I want to put a bed down as well. When we eventually get impregnated by the Reaper, it will kill us. Oh. These Amphros always a pain down here you can destroy your hazmat suit so just clear this area out a bit okay that's our bed down and I'm just gonna build just around the side close to these two gas vents here as you can see we're not taking any radiation damage and of course we're gonna do captain fat dogs trap now my transitions are nowhere near as good as his, so I do suggest going and checking out his video 
especially if you want to see how to build this trap. He makes really good trap videos, but it starts with five triangles like so, and then we get double door frames. We need to go up too high, and this is going to make the ramp that our reaper will fall into. Now we attach stone staircases to this. The reaper can't damage stone, so we're all good. One, two. Now we can't go out a third one because we need to put a foundation down for a second, but let's just get these two steps down. Just stick a temporary triangle foundation there and we can now build into the ground. And this one is too close, so it'll still make its way up that ramp. It's just the surface isn't totally even. It doesn't need that third step on that side, just in where we've chosen to build. Let's get the triangles and make the circle on this side. Now it can't burrow in through that area. Back to triangles. Okay, so we need two triangles coming out towards us this way. Here, Carno. Double door frames on either side of the triangle. Now back to triangle ceilings. So we just want to come out in a curve this way and it builds the trap in. Now I'm sure Captain Fat Dog does this one much more justice, but the beauty of this one is there's no double doors. It can swing and get you, and it, it's a difficult tame. So having this trap, it gets my seal of approval. There we go. So level 55. Um, I don't want to accept anything less than 100, but we'll keep on killing them. And we're going to keep on circling this area. We want to kill everything in the area. When it comes to finding any decent dino, you don't need to wander all over the map, you just need to do a good route of an area where you know that particular creature you're looking for spawns in. You just got to keep on doing it. Let's just get Bryski's health up a bit more. Ooh. Heal up a bit. But yeah, I don't want to accept anything less than a level 100. Especially as we have to go through so much trouble to get this particular creature. It looks almost dead. But yeah, important to keep your light pet on. And unfortunately, it doesn't matter that it's a level 10. Its base health is still 40k for the Reaper Queen. So I think we're going to call it a day here. We will come back. I've killed at least half a dozen of them. But the best we had was that level 80. And that was definitely the worst. 10 won't do. So we will go and heal up. I also want to catch the night cycle. I want to go and do some more surface hunting. We've got a 90% night come up, so we'll go and do that. We will come back, continue our hunt for a decent reaper. Okay, so it's been a minute and I figured we'll go back to doing some more reaper hunting. And I figured that we would build ourselves a little maternity ward here. Of course, when we get impregnated by the Reaper, we're going to need to give birth somewhere and they scarper these things. So I've built a specific room for it. We've been doing more breeding and I've had a weight mutation, which we've kept, had a cool color on it, but I might throw it in at the end. But yeah, nothing that we needed to keep. So no more progress made on the Megalosauruses and nothing much to report on from the surface. Got some good flak gear, which I will use in the arena, because we don't need to use hazmats in there, we just need to use, we can swap out our gear and wear flak armor in the arena itself. So, let's head back, try and do this in one jump. I always, I always love this jump. Again, over the three waterfalls here, and we'll see if we can find a half decent level today. Okay, I don't know what level it is, but I don't want that ant throat annoying it. Okay. Let's 
spotted us. Um, sometimes it's just as easy to kill them in the trap if they're a crap level anyway. Because, oh, a 110. You will do. You will do. Okay. Like I say, sometimes... Um, if you do find a poor level and you kill them in the trap, it's a little bit easier because if something else gets involved in the fight, the Reaper eats it and regains health and you know, you're fighting a losing battle sometimes. Let's clear this out of the way. So our trap is just here. As you can see, we're in the radiation zone, but as we get here, just out of it. Go. And it's missed it, so we'll try that again. Another re good reason for setting this trap up in this area where there is no radiation zone is that when you get impregnated, Reaper does kill you, and when you respawn back, I don't actually have any hazmat suit on. And if you take any radio da radiation damage, it will abort the process, I suppose is the nicer way of putting it. Okay, we've just got to knock this Reaper's health down to around the 2,000, 2,500 mark. Keep our light pet on while we're doing it. I do have the magnifying glass with us so we can check. Just let me see. Don't want to get off my drink. Um, it's got to be down to around. Oh, there we go, 2,700. So we'll just give a couple more bites. I think that should do it. You come over here. We don't want to eat in seekers, otherwise, it will gain its health back. We've taken a lot of torpor damage there. I was worried that Brightsky might get knocked out. And here we go, look. It's giving off this pink aura. Turn our light off. And it's kind of running as well at the same time. So I'm just going to hit it with our crossbow and our primitive bow. And if you're on your drake, it will grab you off the drake. Okay, didn't like that. Need it to start sniffing. There it goes, it's, sniff it's sniffing us, and it's grabbed us. There we go. Oh. But that's how you do it, and that's why I put the bed down right next to the trap. And also why we build it out of the way of the radiation. Now... I think I've forgotten I've forgotten our light pet. I should have put our light pet down. Oh uh, Douglas. This is not good. And due to our settings, we've only got like 13 minutes before we need to give birth. Come on. Dougie. Don't die, mate. I think he's trapped in there. Do I, I try and kill the Reaper quick? I think I might have messed this one up. We might have lost Douglas B. It's almost there. I don't know, is it eating something? So Won't have much. Of course, if we was in a tribe, we'd just get somebody else to come down here, but Oh, Douglas, I'm sorry. That my bad. I should have taken my light pet off. Oh. We've only got 11 minutes left, so we need to get back to base. Due to the settings we're using, we've only got 11 minutes in order to get enough XP and benefit from the extra 75 levels. So you just need to kill creatures. But of course, as always, the best way to get XP in arc 
for slaughtering babies. <laughs> so I'm just going to hatch a couple of spino eggs and we'll get... That should be enough. Okay. Well, nine minutes left. Down to our hatch times, but... Should be enough. Of course, our server settings are different, so it gives you a little bit of time. Right. Go, so a couple of spino eggs. And that should be more than enough. Spinos give really good XP. So. Go four minutes. And we've got eight minutes, so plenty of time. I may just go and add one more. The rock date drakes take too long to hatch, but got another spino in here. Um, just normal ones. There's a spino egg. Yeah, we'll grab that. Hatch out a third one. I don't think it will be necessary. Just a couple should be more than enough. Rice key out of the way. Took a lot of torpor damage in that fight. I was actually worried I might lose Bryski and get knocked out. I had Delboy down there as backup. But I'm not sure if the Reaper can grab you off the back of the Spino. As you can see, it definitely can off the off the Drake. I assume it can on the Spino as well. go. Let's just keep an eye on how many levels we get for this. And, well, there we go. So, two was enough to get plus 75 levels. We've got all of the XP we needed. I so I didn't think it would take more than a couple of Spinos to do it. And we've still got three and a half minutes left. Pleased I built that birthing chamber now. Just get rid of this last Spino. Okay, well, can definitely see something protruded out of my back, as well as my gut. But we're almost ready, and you definitely want to come somewhere where you can lock the door behind you. Ah, oh, here we go! Ah, oh. <laughs> and there we go. There's our baby Reaper. I do love this it's a unique taming method. Now, I've got one of the Reaper glands on me, and told, if you claim it, it shouldn't eat you if you're carrying a Reaper gland, but we'll see. We'll see. These things... Yeah, no, that's not a thing. I was only carrying some meat on me, and um, I figured I'd give it a try, but it doesn't It doesn't work. That's it, man. To worry. It's game over, man. It. It's game over. And... Oh no. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Oh, it's everything, everything's attacking it, isn't it? That's... Oh no, it took me ages to set this up. Oh, you're having a laugh. Everything was on it. Oh, well, now I'm extra pleased I built this little shack. Right, I need to open the door and get in there before it gets out. Oh, a nightmare this thing is. Okay. Don't go, don't go, don't go. Oh, oh, yeah, I see it. See, it tried, it tried. <laughs> now all we need to do is cryo this thing. And... If you'll stop moving, sir. Once we throw it out again, it shouldn't move. Okay. Oh, finally. Go. And just grab this back. So I did have the Reaper gland on me. I wondered if that did work. Of course, we need them glands anyway. There's trophies for Rockwell. Now, oh, I'm always nervous throwing it back out, but it'll be fine. It'll be fine. We throw it back out, it won't move anymore. There we go. Okay. So, stats-wise, well, I don't know how many wild points we got there, but... We still got to get a full imprint on it without the spyglass mod. Can't actually see how many wild points it's got, but uh, yeah, it doesn't seem too bad so far. 
It's like, I'm sure it'll be more than useful, especially up on the surface. It's going to be good backup and what a unique tame. So just have to raise this up and oh, I'm going to have to sort out this breeding area. Get everything back up there. Oh, this is going to take forever to do, guys. It was all on passive. Ignore everything. Fuck. Perhaps when you do yours, do it a bit further away from your breeding area. <laughs> Unlike me. Uh, right. So we're back with our fully grown up Reaper King. And I want to take him out for a spin. But of course, we need to give him a name. So we're going with the patron naming rights. So Yeti, you are the Reaper King. And we managed to get a full imprint on you. Stats wise... It's looking pretty healthy, really, to be honest. I want to pump your health up to around 40,000 if I can. We'll dump the rest into melee damage and make you into an absolute tank. Now, of course, I didn't want to pull this whole thing down, so I've got like half a dozen of the Megalosaurus females up there now, just dropping eggs. And not quite as many as before, but it'll work, it'll work. And I can bring out some more females. We also tamed a Featherlight while we was down there, so we lost Douglas B, but we're going back round on the patron naming rights again, and Abby Squidworm, we've been a patron member for a long time now, so we're naming you after the Featherlight. Now, of course, I know you're actually the Trike, and I still have that Trike on the Fjordor map. It's been sort of following maps, because they're the community maps and things we do. But now we've brought you into the complete game with my favourite light pet, I think. The feather light. I, I changed my mind on my favourite light pet. Okay, so the Reaper, of course, has got this huge jump. And I'll just go and kill some Spinos and stuff down this river. Go and pump some levels. And let it heal up a bit. This would be a great help up on the surface. Straight away there. Five levels for that Spino. And Yeti is going to be pretty useful, actually. It's not a bad way to get around the Aberration map on the back of one of these, to be honest. If you like staying on foot. I do prefer my Rock Drake, but nothing's really going to touch you on the back of one of these things. See a few things there. Oh yeah, we've got a Spino and a few Carnas here. A little meeting that I'm going to join. I just want to do my tail swing. Well, we could do the tail swing while you were in mid air. Like that. While he was jumping. Oh, this would be some good points here. That. No problem at all. Just choose through everything. And that's before we've really leveled it. So Yeti. And of course we've got the tranquilizing poison shot. Tail swing. So yeah, it's a really cool, unique creature. I guess we could bring it into the Rockwell fight, but I think I'm mainly going to use it up on the surface as backup. Let's see what the yellow one has to offer. Sometimes the yellow ones end up being better than the red drops. Oh, out of stamina. Always want to be careful when you run out of stamina on your drake. Always takes a little while for it to start replenishing. I get rid of all the seekers though. Coast is clear. Okay. And we've got a Rock Drake saddle. Excellent. Now, ooh, it's really expensive to craft, but really useful. Um, just going to make 
our rock drake much more serverable on top of the surface and be able to take a lot more damage and I'm actually going to be riding Bryski in the, the Rockwell arena so I don't plan on getting hit much while I'm on it I'm going to be going after the tentacles but the saddle will be useful so a rock drake saddle pretty useful find of course Ark was never just going to drop the Mastercraft saddle for me it's going to be the blueprint because it wants me to grind and it will be a day grinding out all of the resources we need for that saddle but I will craft it of course we need a blueprint for the shotgun that way I can put some crafting skill on and get as many points as we can for it of course we're still missing the Megalosaurus saddle uh, just paint the basket up here so I need to keep on hunting for that But definitely having a Reaper King is going to be really useful, especially if we get cornered. And that's pretty much everything you need to know about taming one. Managed to get plenty of levels on Yeti now, now. so up to around 40,000 health. And the rest I'm just going to stack in melee damage. But yeah pretty unique tame really really like the fact that they added this to arc and I'm just going to continue pumping melee damage and it'll be more than useful maybe we'll take it into the rockwell fight maybe it might be useful at the back of the pack there just going to switch on our megalosauruses we'll keep rolling for our next mutation just been slightly unlucky had a few food and oxygen mutations but would you for a new melee or health mutation tonight I'm gonna to go head back out on the surface because we're looking at another 10% day 90% night situation so I really need to take advantage of them evenings when they come along perhaps next time go out and do a basilisk tame of course another unique creature that came out with aberration but I've been hunting quite a few of them I'm trying to spawn that ever elusive alpha basilisk but perhaps next time we'll go out while we're doing that and hopefully we'll find a reasonable level one but until next time I'm James from Complete Games and I'll see you.